Hello, this week I am doing an extra video because the Microsoft Surface Studio was announced. Microsoft had a big press conference, they had it online, and this thing looks amazing. This thing has been rumored for a long time and I've been trying not to get my hopes up because I thought what if it's just an iMac type thing and there's no pen support and it's not what I wanted or you can't put it at a good angle or whatever, but it's got all that. It's really, really cool. So here are the basic specs. It's it's a full-blown PC. Uh, it's got a 28-inch monitor on it. It's got these cool this cool spring-loaded screen that you can adjust any angle, even this like 20-degree draft board angle, which is perfect for drawing on. And the pen looks like the Surface Pen we're used to using. It works on this tablet. It also has this dial thing, which does a lot of cool stuff. The device itself is giant. I mean, if you think about a 28 inch display. It's not only like a beautiful piece of hardware, but that is going to take up almost your entire desk. Wacom's biggest screen is about the same size. I think it's 27 inches. And the Surface Studio has a price tag of $3,000, which is only a couple hundred dollars more than the largest Wacom tablet. I think like only $200 more. But you're getting a full-blown PC and the screen is so much better. And by better screen, I mean that the resolution is just so much better. Um, it, it, it does look, from what I've seen, to have like a glossy screen. Oftentimes, people who need super accurate colors don't like the glossy screen as much as the matte screen because it, it blackens the blacks too much and changes the color range a little bit. A $3,000 price tag pretty much puts this out of the price range of almost everybody. And initially I was hoping that this would kind of come in around half that, 1500. I expected it to be come in smaller screens as well, maybe starting around 21 inches. I was expecting something very similar to Apple's iMac line, uh, but with pen support. So big question, am I going to review it? I don't know. I, I clearly really want to review it, um, but what Microsoft has said on their website is that this is going to be available in limited quantities, and I don't know what that means. If that's just a way to get people to pre-order it, or if that means that, no, really, there's not gonna be a lot of these out there, it's gonna be hard to get a hold of, in which case I might not be able to really get a hold of one of these things until next year, we'll have to see. But with that said, yeah, I really want to get my hands on one of these things and I really do wanna try one of them. So I was really surprised that they went full high end on this thing, big, huge screen, you know, huge specs. I mean, it's kinda, of, I think I saw that it came with 32 gigs of RAM? I mean, that's like, what are you gonna, that's a lot of RAM. So I had read that the reason that Microsoft got involved in the hardware world was initially because they didn't feel like people, the hardware manufacturers like Dell, HP, uh, Acer, were taking advantage of everything that Windows could do with with its software, they weren't taking advantage with their hardware. The PC world is like this race to the bottom where everybody's trying to make the cheapest product humanly possible and sell as many of them as they can. And Microsoft wanted to make high-end things. They wanted somebody to come up with something that would compete with Apple. And the closest thing they were getting were these gaming laptops with neon red glowing keyboards. And so what Microsoft wanted to do is they wanted to make like these high end products and then let their distributors come up with like kind of lower end, lower priced versions of them. They wanted to show what is possible with Windows and then let other people kind of fill in the gaps. And so when I see this product today, that's totally what they're doing. They are just making the coolest thing humanly possible to show people what they can do. And then they're, we just have to wait a year or two for all the other people to get their act together and make something that's cheaper, but basically kind of does the same thing. So get to it, Dell. Now, I think my very favorite part of the video is when I was just randomly watching and they got to the part where they're actually showing artists and illustrators using this thing, and then they showed the Sketchable team. And I was like, yeah, go Sketchable. It's really cool to see people that you kind of like know online and have been rooting for for a while, like get an awesome break like that. So I wanna talk about Windows 8 just a little bit. I know it might seem a little out of date and weird to talk about that right now, but I think it's relevant. And the reason I think it's relevant is because Windows 8 was widely derided when it came out as, as just a terrible piece of software. Nobody liked it. It was kind of a running joke. It's still a running joke. If you wanna make fun of software, you know, maybe you throw Windows 8 out there. People just didn't care for it. But looking back at it in retrospect, this idea of adding touch to your interface was going to have growing pains and Windows 8 uh, was basically all of those growing pains, but there was a strategy to it. And I think years later now, looking back at that, the, that risk really made 
the Surface possible, made this product possible, made a lot of the innovation that we see Microsoft doing today possible. Uh, they, they took a risk, they took a lot of heat for it, but now it's paying off big time. And I think that aspect of Microsoft right now is very Apple-like. Apple does this in small ways all the time, ditching the headphone jack, changing the charger plug at the bottom of the phone. These are very unpopular things to do, but these set you up for other things. Those are obviously smaller examples. Way back in the day, Apple didn't put arrow keys on the original Mac because people were used to uh, moving around the screen that way and they wanted people to use the mouse more, so they just took those keys off. Forcing innovation, breaking innovation, sometimes you have to frustrate some people in order to move forward. Now maybe this isn't courageous, but innovation does take time. It is an iterative process. You don't always see the fruits of your labor, um, but I think we're starting to see it now with Microsoft, and I think that's really exciting. And I think the way Windows 10 is setting itself up, it's doing the same thing for its software that it's been starting to do with its hardware. Yeah, so that's about all I have as far as, you know, impressions of this thing go. I'm, I'm really sincerely surprised that uh, if you had told me two years ago that I would be far more excited about a Microsoft event than an Apple event that's happening the next day. I would have thought you were nuts, but here we are. I really, I wouldn't say I don't care about the MacBooks that are coming out tomorrow, but they kind of pale in comparison to this. So I'm gonna keep talking about this on Twitter as I have probably over the next couple days. If you'd like to join the conversation, hit me up there. Also, you know, down in the comments, we could talk about this kind of stuff. That's all I got, so uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later.